Collect $50 signs, then exit the level within two minutes. You'll have three energy hearts at your disposal, and somehow I have a feeling he'll need the lot. See if you can prove me wrong. And for this challenge, we have our very own magnificent Morticia. Please welcome from Reading, Lisa. A splendid multi-layered uh, affair you've got on here right now, Lisa. What attracted you to this Adams Family game? Uh, I think it's something to do with Morticia. Actually. Yeah, yeah. You, I must admit. Did you actually audition for a part in the film? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could. For the ultimate verdict to see actually what is going to happen to you. So if you'd like to hang on, we'll just go over to the man now. I'm sorry, but that simply wasn't good enough. It's a banishment to the pit, I'm afraid. Well, it's. Goodbye, Lisa of the many layered skirts. Down to the nether regions of my platform she goes. <laughs> this week we gather round the nest of occasional tables and take a look at board games. First stop, a rummage around imitation leather sacks with Scrabble. One of the best things about Scrabble is that you can play against a computer. There are various skill levels, ranging from pretty good to the top level, which will whip your ass. It tops up all the scores like in the blink of an eye, so there's none of that double letter, triple word malarkey. It's all done for you. Scrabble is a computer game? What's the point? Well, at least you can't lose the pieces down the back of the sofa. Next up, Norsemen with abundant horns and dodgy facial growths in Ragnarok. It's based on the ancient board game The King's Table, which apparently is about three million years old, so it's obviously been seriously playtested. The concept is very similar to chess. <laughs> the main differences are the board is a lot bigger, and one side has a lot more pieces than the other. It may Kenneth's favourite adult pastime, Trivial Pursuit. Oh, roll the dice. It's got digitised pictures, digitised speech, digitised sound, digitised smell, it's just got everything. It's complete sensory overload. This may be a slightly more interesting way for kids to gain more general knowledge than flicking through an encyclopedia, but personally I got bored after five minutes. It's not very well implemented, and quite frankly I had more fun playing the board game. Oh, hi there, big boy. <laughs> Now it's time for this week's feature, and with Christmas penny pinchingly close, the battle lines are drawn up for the clash of the 16-bit consoles. In the black corner, weighing in at 17 pounds, the Sega Mega Drive, starring Sonic, Road Rash, and Tasmania. In the grey and grey corner, it's a new kid on the block, the Super NES, aided and abetted by Super Mario, Super Tennis, and Street Fighter 2. Three top journals give their views. The Nintendo machine wins out quite easily due to the fact that it has around about 31,500 more colours available than the Sega. SNES, fantastic graphics, and it can do all the arcade trickery, taking pictures of universes, folding them, spinning them, zooming in. Mega Drive can't. When there are a lot of ops here, you don't get half as much on the SNES, but maybe you will on the Mega Drive. There's absolutely tons and tons. Mega Drive, everything's a little bit cheaper. With the Mega Drive, you can buy a Master System converter, which will let you play any Master System game on your Mega Drive. You can't play. Now, unless you've had your head buried in a lavatory basin for the last four weeks, you should know the most pant-wettingly brilliant day out in history is nearly upon us. Yes, it's only three weeks until Games Master Live at the Birmingham NEC on 4th, 5th and 6th of December. Even yours truly has got leave from the Games Master Resort to host all manner of games playing challenges, just like the ones you've seen on TV. Games Master Club members get whopping discounts. Some more mouth-watering morsels for you all to feast upon. 
Now as I wind my way through the bowels of the rig to meet... The game is space pirates. As an intergalactic marshal, armed with a simple laser gun, your assignment is to rescue a group of innocent colonists being held hostage by a band of decidedly unsavory ruffians. I'll be following your progress with interest. Best of luck. And joining us for this intergalactic gentleman's excuse me is one of the biggest stars from Neighbours. So please give a warm antipathy and welcome to the James Dean of Ramsey Street, Christian Schmidt. I saw you practicing this a little bit. How, how do you fancy your chances at this intergalactic shoot em up? Well, I'm not so sure. I'll see how I go, though. <laughs> OK, if you'd like to take your place. If you want to see whether Christian Schmidt can bring some antipathy and authority to bear upon the space pirates, join us after the break. Open it. Right. These guys can come from anywhere. There's one. All right, nicely got in the head there. The gangway. Here comes a guy from the left. They've got more dry ice there than we've got in the studio, Tim. <laughs> Behind the drums, another one. Another Coming one. from the left. Oh, again. yes, another one. Doing very well. He's doing excellent. Here we here, go. Yes, he's through. So he's completed the first stage. He's got to get right through and free the hostages. Now, look where the guys are hiding themselves, because that's where they'll be coming from. Okay. Oh, peg leg. Press, fella. No, what's the guy filling with instruments? Here he comes. Here oh, he's comes pulled the piece. He's pulled the piece, but he got him there. Now, remember where the guys hid. Oh, that's one. right. Well, there's another one further back to my third. They're almost as badly as home and away, aren't they, really? Here <laughs> they come. <laughs> nice one there. Oh, he's oh, oh, the oh, old style. He's got him there. Is that the ball, Tim? I think there might be one more. No, he's no, that's through. it. He's got past the second stage. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. The hostages are. See, see the guy who's tied up over there. Yeah. They're all held in by a sort of power field that's controlled by those two bright lights. Okay. Shoot all the space pirates and then free the hostages. Is the basic plan. Okay, so he's got two space pirates down. Here comes a third one. They're all coming down these ropes like a little scout jamboree. Yeah. The woman on the left who's tied up. That's her. She'll give him a few pieces of advice. Okay. Oh no! Watch out, the guy. Person. Game over. Oh. Has he got one little slab of energy? Energy level is hold. getting critical. <laughs> no, go down the ladder, here we come. Got him last time. Oh, yes, he's gone now. excellent. Now, watch, 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 here he comes. Again. Oh, he's gone. Getting in a little practice recently. You've got a new, a new show that you've just been doing. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, we're doing um, Tomorrow, The Tomorrow People, which is a remake um, of the old 70s programme. Uh, we're doing five episodes of that at the moment, so it, oh. it's, it's good fun. Yeah. OK, well, we'll look out for that. In the meanwhile, thank you very, very much for coming on, Games Master. And let's have a final round of applause for our gallant challenger, Christian Schmidt! Hello, Games Master. Hello, and just what is your particular problem? On level two of the Immortal, I cannot work out which order the three gems go into the three circles. Can you tell me, please? No. <laughs> Only joking. You'll be aware by now that each circle has four indents in it. Instability cheat on James Pond 2, Robocod. Could you tell me what it is? That's what I'm here for. As soon as the game starts, walk right until you see the Arctic toy sign. Above the board, you'll see a number of objects, which you should collect in the following order. First the cake, then the hammer, then the earth, then the apple, and finally the tap. The first letters of these objects, collected in that order, spell the word cheat. And you are now totally invincible. Thanks a lot. Who's last for tonight? Hello, Games Master. What can I do for you? How can I win the drinking contest on Monkey Island 2? The trick here is to, uh, is to find some alcohol free near Grog. Captain Kate has the only available supply, so you need to get it off her. Put her picture over the top of your wanted poster on Fat Island and wait for her to be arrested in your place. Out here on the rig, through the game's atmospheric first level without losing life. Keep your wits about you. Now, we reckon this challenge is a doddle. So what we're going to do is throw it out into the inviting arms of our audience. So if we've got any volunteers out there who fancy their chances at the shoot em up agony, please stick your arm in the air. Uh, let me see, OK, let's have... No, you're far too ugly up there. Let's have someone a little bit better looking. OK, how about this wee guy here, the wee guy in the Games Master T-shirt? And let's look further along here, let's see. Oh yes, this guy in the ludicrous stripy t-shirt there. Yup, you're the big guy, that's it. Now let's have someone from this side. Okay, the girl at the end. Average, he supposes. Okay, I think, Jack, we're gonna have you going first. 
So if you'd like to sit down in the chair. Not to go too low, fish will rise from the water, but you know, not to worry about the backgrounds. OK, our competitors only have one life. So, Jack, are you ready? Then off you go. Yeah, of course, young Jack there, and he's firing all the way there. Yeah. That's quite a safe place to stay, is it? Well, it, it, is, it is for now. He's keeping out of the way of the fish. Uh, as, as you can see, some, some of the aliens will come down from above, but uh, Jack's you know, some, He's some, doing very well. He's despite he's the consummate. Yep. Oh, no, you've got these little sort of crabby, snappy things at the bottom, but he's That's got right. past well, them. Yeah, he's moved forward to avoid their shots. Now, as you can see, things are getting a little bit more frantic on screen. Oh, now, what's the spiders Well, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to collide with those. Oh, you, no, can't, you can't shoot the actual web, but... He's... Angela, are you ready? Then off you go. OK, off goes Angela. What she learn from young Jack's mistakes? Well, she certainly seems to have. Uh, one of the things that we didn't get to see with Jack's is some of the power-ups. You can see the size of the shots, Dominic. There are potion power-ups to be picked up later in the level, which will increase that making. It was Raj Pal. Are we going to see a winner here, Tom? Well, I certainly hope so, Dominic. It was a shame what happened to Angela. Let's see what Raj Pal can do with this one. OK, he's got to get to the end of the level without losing a life. He's being quite cautious. He's staying in the, right near the back left of the screen. He's That's got these right, snappers. Well, oh, my word! He very well, nearly he got... Well, he ran it a bit close there, there, so early in the level. And he's getting a wee bit confident, and he may... That's what I've got to say. You're unlucky. So let's have another round of applause for our three volunteers, Jack, Angela and Rushball. <laughs> A rather unfulfilled...